The brainstem is a small but complex area of the central nervous system. It contains tracts traveling up and down between the spinal cord and the cortex, tracts interconnecting the cerebellum with the spinal cord and the cortex, as well as cranial nerve nuclei. It also contains the big monomenergic systems that influence all CNS functions, as well as the reticular formation, which is the key integrator of the nervous system. We're now going to go and have a look at these structures in an attempt to organize this small and complex area of the brain. We'll begin with an anatomical overview of the surface markings of the brainstem. These surface structures are directly related to the internal anatomy. As we travel through the brainstem, these surface markings will help us to navigate and organize the motor and sensory pathways within the brainstem. On this mid-sagittal section through the brain, you can identify the three parts that comprise the brainstem. The midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. This is the ventricular system as it goes through the brainstem. Here is the third ventricle, at the level of the diencephalon. The thalamus is located on either side. It is connected to the fourth ventricle via the cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct crosses through the midbrain and opens into the fourth ventricle, which spans the pons and rostral medulla. The fourth ventricle then closes off to form the central canal in the caudal medulla. Cerebrospinal fluid can exit the fourth ventricle through two lateral foramina and one medial foramen. This is an isolated brainstem. We have removed the cerebellum and the forebrain. Here is the midbrain. It comprises the big fiber tracts as they emerge and enter the forebrain. These are the cerebral peduncles. On the posterior surface, you can see the tectum with the paired superior and inferior colliculi. In this cross-section through the midbrain, you can see the cerebral peduncles here and the superior colliculi on the posterior surface. This pigmented area is the substantia nigra, known for its key role in reward, addiction and movement. This is the pons. You can identify this large bulge on the anterior surface. It contains the descending motor tracts and special relay nuclei related to the cerebellum. Connections with the cerebellum are on the posterior surface. These are the three cerebellar peduncles. This is the medulla. From a clinical perspective, this is a critical region where in a small area both motor and sensory pathways converge. It is home to essential cranial nerve nuclei and, importantly, it contains the breathing center. It is the most caudal part of the brainstem and it is continuous with the spinal cord caudally and the pons rostrally. Due to its relationship with the ventricular system, the medulla can be divided into two sections. This is the rostral medulla, and it is also referred to as the open medulla, as it is open to the fourth ventricle. Here at the obex, the ventricle closes off into the central canal, and this part of the medulla is referred to as the closed medulla. On the anterior surface of the brainstem are the pyramids that contain the descending motor fibers. Here, in the caudal medulla, the fibers cross over to the contralateral or opposite side. This is the pyramidal decussation. Lateral to the pyramids lie the olives. The inferior olivary nuclear complex lies underneath here. It is an important nucleus for the cerebellar circuitry. On the posterior surface of the brainstem, the posterior columns ascend with sensory information from the spinal cord. 
This is where the respective nuclei are located. The nucleus gracilis, medially, and the nucleus cuneatus, laterally. This is a diagram of the brainstem. It will help us to conceptualize the inner structures and their relationships to each other. Let's get oriented. This is the anterior surface, and this is posterior. This here is the midbrain. Here's the pons, the medulla, and this, of course, is the cerebellum. This here is the ventricular system. It comprises the cerebral aqueduct at the level of the midbrain. It opens up into the fourth ventricle and then closes off into the central canal. This area here, posterior to the ventricular system, is the tectum. The level of the midbrain, it comprises the superior and inferior colliculi, as well as the superior and inferior medullary vella, which close off the fourth ventricle. Anterior to the ventricular system, making up the core of the brainstem, is the tegmentum. The descending motor fibers travel in the base of the brainstem. This comprises the cerebral peduncles in the midbrain, the base of the pons, and the base of the medulla. Now let's have a look at what a cross-section through the rostral midbrain at this level would look like. This diagram shows a cross-section through the rostral midbrain with the superior colliculi and the cerebral peduncles here. This here is the cerebral aqueduct. Posterior to the cerebral aqueduct are the superior colliculi, and they comprise the tectum at this level of the midbrain. The core of the midbrain here is the tegmentum, and then the base of the midbrain comprises the cerebral peduncles. Common terminology based on these organizing principles is extremely important as we navigate this very complex area of the brain. Further clinical subdivisions into lateral and medial areas are all based on these general principles. In this diagram, we're going to look at the cranial nerves associated with the different parts of the brainstem. So first, let's divide this brainstem into its different parts. So here, this is the midbrain right here, just caudal to the diencephalon. This here is the pons, and this is the medulla. Cranial nerves three and four emerge from the midbrain, and they have their respective nuclei located within the midbrain. There's another nucleus in the midbrain associated with cranial nerve five, and we'll get to that in a moment. The pons has several cranial nerves associated with it. So the biggest is the cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve. It emerges from the basal pons, and two of its nuclei are within the pons. Cranial nerves six, the abducent nerve, seven, the facial nerve, and eight, the vestibulocochlear nerve, um, emerge from the pontomedullary junction and their cranial nerve nuclei are also within the pons, spilling over a little bit into the medulla. Cranial nerves 9, 10, and 12 emerge from the medulla, and all of the nuclei associated with those cranial nerves are within the medulla, and there's a lot of nuclei associated, especially with cranial nerves 9 and 10. Now, cranial nerve 11 actually emerges from the upper cervical levels of the spinal cord, and it sneaks into the skull through foramen magnum. We're now going to have a closer look at cranial nerve 5 to really see how different nuclei make up one cranial nerve. So here's cranial nerve 5 as it emerges from the basal pons, and um, cranial nerve 5 is, of course, the cranial nerve for sensory reception from the face. 
So we're gonna have some sensory nuclei associated with it, but it also does the muscles of mastication. So we're going to need a motor nucleus as well. So let's put that chief sensory nucleus in here, it's right about there in the pons. It's going to process discriminative touch and vibration right here. Pain and temperature are processed in the spinal trigeminal nucleus and it extends all the way through the medulla, just like that. And that's where pain and temperature from the face will project to. Proprioception from the muscles of mastication is processed in the mesencephalic nucleus, which extends into the midbrain here. So just to summarize those sensory nuclei, we have the chief sensory nucleus here in the pons, the spinal trigeminal nucleus, which processes pain and temperature, and finally, the mesencephalic nucleus for proprioception coming from the muscles of mastication. Motor to the muscles of mastication comes from the motor nucleus of five, which is also located within the pons, just rostral, to the sensory nucleus. So let's get those fibers to their respective nuclei for um, all of the sensory information. So fibers will have their cell bodies within the trigeminal ganglion, afferents will come in, and then they will go either to the chief nucleus for, again, discriminative touch and vibration, or they will descend into the spinal trigeminal nucleus where pain and temperature are processed. Another option is, of course, to go into the mesencephalic nucleus for those fibers that carry proprioceptive information. Motor fibers are going to emerge from the motor nucleus. That's where the cell bodies of those fibers are located, and they're going to exit through the trigeminal nerve to finally get to the muscles of mastication in the head. Fibers from all of these different nuclei converge to form one cranial nerve. Let's have a look at the 12 cranial nerves on this beautiful specimen. This here is cranial nerve one, or the olfactory bulb. This here is cranial nerve two, the optic nerve. Emerging here from the interpeduncular fossa is cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve. Cranial nerve four is the only cranial nerve to emerge from the posterior surface of the brainstem and can be seen in this plastinated brainstem specimen. It emerges right here, inferior to the inferior colliculus. Cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve, emerges from the basal pons. Cranial nerve six, the abducens nerve emerges medially at the pontomedullary junction, and cranial nerve seven and eight emerge laterally at the pontomedullary junction. Cranial nerve nine, the glossopharyngeal nerve, emerges in the rostral medulla. Cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, emerges posterior to the olive in the medulla. And then cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve, emerges anterior to the olive. Cranial nerve 11 emerges from the upper cervical levels of the spinal cord and sneaks into the skull through foramen magnum. As these cranial nerves emerge from the brain and travel through the skull to their respective territories, they are vulnerable to injury. Knowing the anatomical relationship of the cranial nerves with their surrounding structures is an important diagnostic tool.